Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm the Campaign Marketing Manager here with eLearning Brothers. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, some of the behind the scenes of creating a stylish course theme. So all of our templates that we make for Captivate, Storyline, and Lectora, we put those together in uh, in themes, little, little template packets, and they are really good looking. So we're going to be talking about some of what goes into those and and uh, how we, we build those and design those. The session will be recorded. We will email a copy of that to everybody who has registered. So if you do have to duck out a little bit early, uh, you will get a copy of this later. We'll also be posting it on our blog, very likely. So visit us at blog.elearningbrothers.com so that we can uh, you know, show off more of what we've done. And you can share the video and recording around that way as well. If you have questions or comments during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer your questions using the questions panel. That is part of the GoToWebinar control panel that you've got there. So send us your questions and we'll answer as many of them as we can as we get them. All right, so we have a fantastic guest with us today. We've got Alan Marquez, one of our expert e-learning developers. Thanks for joining us, Alan. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass the screen and the presentation over to you. Okay, can you see it now? Yep, that looks like Lector to me. Yeah, awesome. Thank you guys for joining us today on this webinar. This is going to be, you know, so cool because, because we will get the chance to show you how we create this amazing course to start from scratch. You know, one of the things that I uh, love the most about uh, working on Little Brothers is the chance to create these and program these amazing course starters. And the fact that we have the, you know, in Lectora 19 from the start, it's just great. And uh, when you open, your copy of Lectura 19, you will see this screen with six of our main course starters, and you can pick whatever you want and start working, you know, from then. Let me download this first one, and I will show you. One of the things that this webinar will cover is how to create all of these elements in tool. We are not going to we are not going to use uh, items from outside our library, uh, only images, but all of the other elements are for, or comes from the lectora, from lectora. As you can see, one second please. Okay, you can have you can have all of the layouts that you need. You welcome a screen, you pull quotation uh, screens or pages, layouts you want to, uh, you know, arrange your information, your text in the way you like. And we also have interactions. So this is great because you can, without knowing you know too much of programming or, or how to develop something it is very easy to mo modify uh, or replace one of these icons or items and put your own information and this is really cool uh, you can you also have a uh, knowledge check interactions and basic scenarios that you can you know replace all of our assets with your own assets, so this is great. And we have included also quiz and test uh, questions for you. So basically it's a whole course when you can have layouts, when you can have interaction and you have your quiz and everything works great. It works on SCORM, it works on, on HTML5, it works on all your all of your LMS platforms. So this is great. And so you have, you know, the chance to go visit our library at library.elearningbrothers.com. You will see more of our templates, not only from the Toras, but also on some other tools. Okay, without further ado, let's start working on a new uh, template from scratch, okay? So sometimes, or well, basically most of the time, when you need to create a template for a course, you, you have one of these style guys right maybe you have a, it looks a bit different maybe it has a, a you know a lot of elements but this is like, like a basic template where you have all of your typography your fonts and the colors and the way it would look on on the tool for this course it's very you know simple corporate uh, layout or template that we will build directly in lectura using only lectura elements but images right so it, it will look something like this. And I'm going to show you some of our new features that you can only uh, access on Lectora 19. We also uh, work on responsive mode. This is great 
Uh, now, the responsive tool tools uh, work really great. Uh, the way the, the, the course look on mobile devices, it's really, really cool. Okay, so basically it's, it's not a, a large, really long course, it's a small one. Well, we will cover most of the things that we do while creating these amazing course starters. Okay, let's start working on a new file. So I will create a new file, create new title. Okay, you can see again our course starters and you can choose different themes so you can start working. You know, we have a lot of themes, we have a lot of uh, styles, but let's start with a blank theme. Let's say no. Okay. Okay, guys, sorry about this. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Let me open a new screen for you. There we go. Okay, one of the things that, that I like to do when I start working on, on a new course starter is to do some cleanup, some tie up, because we need to set this document in the right way in order to, uh, to, to, to have a better uh, experience moving forward, you know, going forward and working with new pages. So the first things that I want you to show you is this view, uh, view tab where we can show grids and we can create guides that will obviously guide us. And we, will, uh, we will try to keep ourselves using these guides only and we can snap whatever element, whatever item into the grid, which is this, or the guides that we create. We can create guides just by dragging them whenever the place we want. We're not gonna use for this course uh, starter guides, but we're gonna use a different approach I will show you in a bit. And it was, this will inherit down to all of our uh, mobile views. Okay, let's start by creating a layout. Okay, let's insert a, a basic square, right? So I'll, I'll use the grid to guide myself. And I'm not gonna be you know, so precise. Okay, this is perfect. Let me, on the style tab, remove my background to transparent and change the color to a bit softer color. But I need it a bit brighter, right? Let's use the orange, okay. And then on the home tab, I will align this horizontal on the page and vertical on my page. So this will be my margin, my top margin and my left right margin, also bottom margin. Okay, but this, uh, we can expand this into the portrait views from mobile for device, uh, devices. And I can drag this down. There we go. This is my life area. And you can make this a little bit. There you go. Let's horizontal line this again and drag it down. Okay. So as you can see, every view keeps their 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 own size and it will not affect the other views. This is, this is great because you can uh, keep your elements in place when you move throughout your other, your views. And, and I'm gonna try to, you know, keep uh, this life area as my margins. I will try not to have elements outside of these margins. As you can see, when I started creating this, uh, this margin, this life area, I started from the title this is the top area of our, of our, all of our, all of our document or every item that I create on this area, on the top area will inherit down to my other page and my below pages. This is very important because you don't have to create a menu or navigation system for every slide, but you just have one from the beginning. I will show you a bit more of this in a minute. 
let's create a let's say another element you know I put myself on title and create a bar it doesn't matter which color I will try to follow my my theme my style guide but it doesn't matter much okay let me create a bar One of the things that I, you know, love of electronic the most is it, it runs faster. It's it's more agile. The graphics that are created in tool looks great on a HTML publish or a Scorm publish. This is really good. Let me uh, add a darker color. Okay, and let me remove the outline on here. Okay. And let's preview it. Oh, you can see the preview. One second, guys. Okay. Let's see if I can run it because I have it on the other screen. There you go. Okay, you can see that I have this element element on top. I need to put it below. And I will rename this as layer area, which is very important to do. So it doesn't get confused. This was my header bar. Okay, I will drag this down so I won't see this element. So I don't need this uh, life area to be shown. I just need it for reference. So I will hide it on the properties panel. I will select it and click initially hidden because I don't need it to be shown. This is one of the ways you can get rid of this element that is just for reference. There's another way that we'll show you in a minute. Okay, so we have our top bar, we have our live area, we need a navigation system. But before that, let me create a curse title for this. You see what I did? I click insert text block and I will drag this. Here, as you can see, there's a blank as a white fill in, but it disappears after you change the name. Let's say cybersecurity course start. It's the name of this course. Where is it? It's here, right? I need to change the color to white. Let me increase this font size. Okay, I think this looks better. Let's look for a different letter on our home tab. I will use this font that is called Poppins. Okay. What's going on? Why can't I see it? Let's run it and see what's going on. I need to move this down. Let's name this main title. Perfect. Okay, so we have our main title, we have our header, our, la our life area, we need navigation system, we need buttons. And uh, one of the things that a new elements added on this new version of Lectora is the ability to create, you know, transparent buttons or use a an array of stock buttons that are really good. Let me show you where you can insert them. Okay, just click insert tab, go to the button, button and click start button. You will load some folders and just click navigation and you'll have your navigation system. Okay, let's use the arrow circle back. Just click OK. There you go. Well, then, whenever you want to have them. So I will need back and next button. So, but I will cheat on this. But before I cheat, let me show you this new states uh, section of our of our panel because this was not a feature that we had before, and we have it on the turn 19. And this this is just great. 
Let me show the feeling so you can see. Let me show, show white, perfect. What will happen when it's over, over? Let's change it to a lighter color, let's say. Yeah, there we go, okay. And let's change the basic shape to a circle. Now you have your back button, but if you copy, you know, just by copy pasting this, you can have your next button as well. Oh, sorry. Can you see this small green dot? It's the rotate icon. Just click it and you can rotate your shade without the need of, you know, inserting another button. It's just a small trick that I like to do. Okay, as you can see, when you insert a new button, you already have an action assigned to it. This action is the previous, go to previous or go to next, depending on which icon you insert it. Uh, let's click, let's change the next button to next page because since I copied it from the other icon, it had the previous action go to next page. Okay, so I have my navigation system. Now let me group these two icons by clicking, by pressing shift, the, the shift key, right click and click group. And let's rename this nap. Okay, if you hide this, you will see your icons. Let me also group my header title and my header bar into, let's say, course title. Okay, so we have our first element. These elements are, are gonna inherit down to all of our document. If you move to your page one, you have a still done nothing in it. And it's everything is on, on the top level of our document title. So let's rename this to Curse Starter. To Cybersecurity Curse Starter, just for reference. And let's save it. It's really important to save. Always remember that. Awesome. Okay. Well, so what's next on our style guide? We need this color, right? We need to have our own branding color for our company. And uh, how can we use these this, this colors? Mm. We will copy, just by copying the code. Copy. Go to our, where is it? Let's, to our style panel and click on custom color. Oh, interesting. I don't have the code that I need. So we have to use the RGB value uh, values to do so. Okay, when you already have this value, you just right click on one of these uh, blank spaces and this will save the color, add to save color, sorry. Let me show you how. To, yeah, you can right click on Lecture Online, but on Lecture at Desktop, you have to click at Save Colors. I have already added my colors, that's why you can see in them. But if you don't have the RGB color, you can use you know a different tool to look for them. But it's not a big issue. I just want to show you how you can add new colors to your to your document by using the custom. Changing your values, just click and add say add to save colors. And you will have your array of colors ready for you whenever you want to use them. Okay, this has a back uh, uh I thought I had to put rid of it. Okay, that's this is better. Okay, so what's next after I choose my color? Okay, you can also see the the button style that we're going to use, the, the side of the copy. Okay, let's start working on my welcome layout, right? 
let's insert a page title. This is auto-generated, so this is good because when you change your title here, it will change on your on your on your view, on your desktop view. Let's say welcome. It will only be shown on run or preview. Style, let me change the font to the font that we have assigned to this document. And let's say 48 is the font to go. Perfect. Change the color to the dark blue. And this is very important that from the beginning, you start modifying your portrait view because if you don't do this, you will have a you know a lot to a lot of work to do after. You have to you have to we want to make sure that you arrange your your elements properly from the beginning. For example, the top bar you can make it a bit larger, and it will fit the title better. You can also modify the how it looks on let's say tablet portrait by scaling it down using this um, this option and you don't want the to have like a hundred percent view when you're on portrait you want that to make it a bit a little bit small so you change it to let's say eighty percent. Let's see what happens when you move to the phone portrait. It looks, you know, it still looks big, so we have to make it smaller. So, for example, my main course title, let's see how it looks when you run it. Okay, we need space, right? So, we need to make this title smaller using this uh, tool that I just show you on the home panel. Just click and it will fit perfectly. Let's, it's more, I would say 70% is good. Let's pre it and see. Or on. Okay, this is still a bit bigger. Okay, I think 50 is the right number to go. Oh, sorry guys, I click over. Uh, front. So you can see. So I did not change my my course title properly. So that that's why it was not displaying. Let me run it again. There we go. Okay, we have our welcome title. We'll leave this as is for now, but remember we're using this life area to accommodate or to put everything in our margins. So it's very important that you work on this from the beginning. Okay, this is aligned to my margin, to my life area. This looks good. And this looks good here. Okay. Let's run this again. And it says welcome. Okay. First part completed. So what's next? Okay, we will have we'll need to add a background picture. I'm not doing this in a specific order. I know you can, you know, start work, uh, your document with a title, with a subtitle, with a bottom. So I'm just trying to show you how to Add some elements. If we don't get enough time to add all of the elements, it doesn't matter. I just want to show you how to, you know, create this from scratch. Let's use an image I have already assigned to this document. Let's use this. Perfect. This is will this will be our main background image, and let me again align it to horizontal and vertical on my page. This will be my background, but it's you know, but you can see your title because the image is full opacity. We will modify this on the style tab 
and we will change this to 10 percent maybe okay this looks a bit better you can change the background of your whole uh, document of your whole project using the properties page you can change it here to the color you want i'm going to use the white color so this will see will so when you display this you can see your background your image background sorry better right okay what other element can i have here okay i have this blue uh, bar at the bottom let's create this blue bar using the insert tab select your uh, element you want to create and place it here okay style and change it to a safe color let's do this instead right okay this looks good starting to look good let me run this quickly perfect if you if you want to to have the the background image uh, displayed or uh, in front of your background top uh, bottom bar that i just created it's okay but if you don't want that you can just move it down as i showed you before right this will look different but it's as you want so since i want to have this image in front i will change it back to the way it was before okay so another another tool that lectura 19 has and we have been working on this new background textures uh, and our patterns that we can use directly from lectora and let me show you i will create another rectangle and now we'll open this rectangle to show you these new patterns that we have created for you okay let me put this in front rectangle yes. we'll go to the go to our style tab and on our field option we click on texture and you can choose from all of these textures that you want to use and this looks really good this feature is also enabled in Lectora Online. So this is great. Let's change this to 10% and let's see how it looks. Well, let's make it a big. To make it look better. So I'm always trying to preview it and you can see my preview, but you can see when I click run. Awesome, see, you can see this texture. It looks really, really good. Okay, all of these elements are part of my background, uh, my background group, but I haven't grouped it yet. So no worries about that, about it. Let me just add a new shape or a new line to create a separation. We're using the style tab, change it. Okay, five, I think it's good. And let's group everything. Right click and group. Okay, and we can rename this as background elements. All the name you want. Hey, Alan, we've got a quick question here. Yeah. Sure. Um, why don't you use the lock object option? Okay, you, you can use a lock object option if you want. It's, you know, you know, I usually do, but yeah, you, you can use it. It's, it's not, you know, if you don't use it, it's okay, but you can, you can also use the lock option. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's uh, another quick question, just jumping back uh, to, about our templates in general. Okay, um, sure. Especially these these course starters and themes, are we making these accessible 
for people with disabilities or, or editable so that they can be accessible? Yes. And is that true for all of the tools when we build in Lectora and when we build in Storyline and when we build in Captivate? Yeah, this is true, Andrew. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, so I haven't shown you this part yet, but I, I will show you about, about these features, these accessibility options in a minute. But of course, I will cover this part. Thanks, Andrew. Um, okay. So now that you mentioned that, Andrew, it's very important. I'm going to show you right now. On our properties uh, tab, you can uh, enable the empty alt tag. So when you have your screen reader, it won't read any of these elements and will only read your font, your text, sorry. It will only read the elements that you want to be you know, readable. For example, I don't need the line to be read, read so I have to empty out that my elements. And I will only have my welcome text to be read. So this is important for accessibility options. So what's, what, that's one of the way we uh, cover this. Also the way that we, the top order, for example, now I only have my welcome title, but now that I'm going to create a, I want to create a button, this will need to be below my welcome title because it, it needs to be read from the top, right? When I use my tab system. So let me insert a button using transparent button. Okay. So it's transparent, but we can change that in a minute. Change opacity back to 100. Look for one of your saved colors. As you can see, we have uh, buttons with gradients, and we can have solid peelings. Okay, for example, if you choose a, a rectangle with rounded borders, you can make it a bit rounder by clicking on the yellow indicator and drag them to the other side, and it will turn into a rounder button, and this is great because sometimes you just want to use round buttons instead. Let's open our style uh, tab and modify our text on these new buttons. As I mentioned before, sorry, this is a, one of the new features on Lectura 19. Let's change this to begin. For those of you who are not familiarized with Lectora, if you have a, a group of elements and you want to move one of these elements, let's say you want to move the rectangle, if you move it, it will move your whole group. This is one of the things I want you to show you how to just move one of the elements. You just click the element you want to use, press your Alt tab on your keyboard and drag that only element that you want to move. This is confusing at, at first, but this is this will save you a lot of time, right? Just click on the shape or the element, press Alt, and you will be able to move only that element when an object is grouped. If the object is not grouped, it's okay. You can move it however you want. Okay, let's also change the font here. On our font tab, options, make it bold. For example, we use a, our minimum font size, size or is 14. For accessibility purposes, we don't decrease the font size down to 14. You know, you can only from 14 and above. I won't take too much time on this. I won't spend more time on this. I just want to show you how to change the color of this. If you click auto, it will automate auto, automate the, the color, like trying to guess a, a color that matches. This is okay if you want to use it, but if you don't want to have it your color guess, just change it by yourself. And this is great. Okay, it's normal, over, down, and disabled. 
this looks great. Now I have my uh, button element that I needed. Let's see our template. I like keep on making a transition. Okay. Let's run it for testing purposes. Nice. I have almost all of my elements here. Oh, where's my line? It needs to be in front, right? Remember always to do that. Sorry, guys. I keep clicking the wrong button. There we go. Well, how it looks on portrait. Hmm. What I told you before, we need to modify this accordingly to the to these views. What's going on with uh, tablet landscape and phone landscape? Okay, since it's almost exactly the same, we won't spend much time modifying this. Of course, we need to do this when we're, uh, you know, working. You know, let's say for real. But for the purposes of this uh, webinar, we're going to focus on the landscape mode for phone or tablet. Let me do this really quick. See, when you make it larger, it won't be distorted, so this is great. You can have your image with a different size than the, um, than the portrait, tablet portrait, or, oh, sorry guys, I was my fan there. Correct object. Okay. Don't panic. Just press Control C. And there you go. And select your the image you want to. See, this is only background. All of the elements that are not on the stage area. For example, if I move my image. This won't uh, be load on screen on your browser on this gray area, so this is no worry about it. Okay, remember to use Alt because that way it will move everything. Okay, let's preview this. Let's run it. One more time. Okay, it didn't load properly. Let me try this again. So I want to show you how this looks on 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 phone. It looks really great when you have the chance to test on your on your device. I don't know why it's not loading. Well, but we'll get back here later. Because this is working, how we suppose. I don't know what's going on. Okay. See, my button is not on my live area, so this is something you can't afford. You can also make your your begin button bigger. It's one of the things that a uh, make Lectora great when it comes to responsive. Because of course, a uh, design or developer response is so different than develop for desktop, and you can you know change the size of your elements accordingly for your uh, mobile browsers and it won't affect the other views see you can see it make it look good even when it's not responsive okay let's create a new page Sorry guys, let's add a new page. One of the things that I want to show you on this part are the inherent items. For example, if you don't want to have your navigation system on this page, you can disable it like super easy without using any programming or, or coding. 
by using the inher inherit option on the properties panel. Before I do this, let me just uh, copy one of my elements. Oh, let me see my style guide, what's next for this. Okay, this is the objective layout. Okay, let's create a new title. Insert text block. Now that we're here, I forgot to show you how to uh, create a style for your titles, for your subtitles and your body copy, because you spend a lot of time changing these or using this and you want you want to automate this from the beginning i'm sorry that i forgot to mention this before um but we can do it now okay let's go to our text uh, tabs and click on our text style button this way we can manage everything okay like the title see the font that is in there i will need my new font and I also said I wanted on this. I'd say yes. Same for subtitle. This is going to be quick. Office. Bold. This is going to save a lot of time. 14, the minimum size. Okay. You can also change the color. I didn't change the color, but you can also have a different color in this. Okay, where's my my text block? I would say objectives. Okay, since so we're running out of time, I will hurry myself. Sorry, click title. Okay, cool. I have to change the color here. Something that you can see. Okay. So the inherit panel, click on this, and as you can see, all of objects from parents, which is a top level of our title, are here, the course title, the library, the navigation. If you want to remove one of these elements on this page only, just click a specific object from parents, and if I don't want the navigation on this page specifically, just exclude it click OK, and when you preview it, you won't see it. So, you know, in a branching course, or if you have different scenarios with interaction and you don't want to the navigation uh, system to be displayed, you can use the inherit tool, and this will make your life, you know, easier. And this is one of the features that I, you know, use all the time we're working on in uh, Lectora. Okay, cool. Okay, we're running out of time, guys, but let me show you one of our new features as well. Our menu feature, this is, well, it, it, it has been enhanced. It, it has a lot of more properties. And just, let me just change this. My say objective. I did not create an auto-generated title for this. I just created a new text. Objectives. And let's create a table of contents for this. Let's say a, I don't know, preview. Okay, you have your menu here. We won't use this for now. Let's just put it aside. Let's go to our menu tool. And I will show you how it looks, right? And click on the create menu from table of content. I will automatically create your course and click include pages. And you can change the way that this look. For example, now it's horizontal. We wanted to have it like vertical. It's okay. You can modify the, the color of your menu. This is good. Let's change the color of the text. I'm oh, sorry, guys. Uh, is the text color sorry it's in here and you can also use your assign font for your document okay let's do this for now you can also have you know subtitles in case you have an, uh, more elements but you will we will only be showing this part since this is acting as a 
table of content, it will update or you can update it if you start creating new pages for your document. But we want our menu to be placed into the top area. So it can be displayed throughout the whole course. So even if it is created here, just uh, press Ctrl X, click on your top level area, place it, and it will be here. Okay, perfect. So you don't want this element to be shown. So it's set to initially hidden unless add a new button that will show our menu. Our, let's add a stop button. Navigation. Let's use this icon to represent our menu, make it smaller. And since this has an, uh, an action assigned to it, we can say so when mouse is click, let me just go back to this, click on your element. This authority has, this authority has an, uh, an action assigned to it, but we need to complete the action. So I, when the object is click, I want to show what I want to show, well, my menu, the target was already there because it's on the top level, so this is important. Let me find this, and let's see what happens when you preview it. Run it, sorry. Okay, the menu is, is not visible because it's hidden. Just click, and you can use your a uh, your menu that we just created. Let me see why I can't. Something that's preventing me to click. I read it something wrong. Okay, so it's in the top area. Let me move it. Yeah. There you go. You can also add a image background for your menu. This is cool because it allows you to have a bit more variety on your design. Sorry. Sometimes this happens. Background image, browse for file. Let's use one of these images so we have here. Oh, <laughs> this is so big. Sorry, guys, I was not on the right menu. This is menu style management, sorry. Let's say background two, perfect, see? I don't know what can I make it, you know, a bit larger. Now I have this issue. Okay, let's make the margin a bit larger. There we go. This is how you modify the size of your menu. These features are new. So you want to take a look on lecture 19. OK, this is not what I wanted, but you get the point. Let me pre-run this again. And this is not a sign. Uh, let me see what's going on. Menu. Maybe I'm missing something. I can't click on my menu. Ah, there we go. I need it to be on top. Sorry, guys, for this. Okay, menu style, position, and size. Oh, no. Properly, sorry, and always on top. This way you can use your menu that you created from your TOC. 
And if you need to close your menu, you will need to create a new button, a new close button for this. Insert a what I'm going to use from this. What is our shapes? I need a button. Let's use a transparent buttons for this. I change the color of a button. Remember that since it's a transparent button, you need to modify the transparency on the style tab. Okay, this is not what I wanted. There you go. Make it a bit smaller. And let's say you want it. And what's going to be the action for this? Well, on mouse click, hide our menu, which is here, menu. But I need it on my top level, so I have to paste it here. OK, so let's move this down, because this is part of my menu, and group them. Group and create a menu group. So we'll need to change this action because it was only going to hide the menu but not the whole group. On action hide, on mouse click hide, menu. There we go. Let's see if this is running properly. Okay, this is display because this needs to be hidden. Initially hidden. Perfect. See? I didn't add program to this. I didn't add action. It was automated by the TOC, by table of content, and the use of menu. One of the things that I want to show you is the way that we uh, add animation or add entrance to our items or objects we're using. You know, in the past, you inserted your items. Let's add a new, you can get rid of this table of content if you want. Let me delete this. Because I want to show you something really cool that it's our new timeline and our new timeline actions. So let me insert a shape. Let me insert another shape. Okay, so this will be our background for this. And let me create new bullets. Insert shapes. Let's use one of these stars. Let's use this star for bullet points. Let's change the color of this. Okay, I think this looks good. I will create a new text block. You know, using my my text styles. So I will use subtitle on this one. Let's say objective one. Objective one. Change the color, change, make it bolder. And I can also play with the opacity on these bullets, like 80, 90, sorry. Okay, objective. So we have our text and our element. And I will group this and create one group that will be animated. And let's name it objective one. Let's copy this, this group. What is this text block? This is my title. Let me move it to this level because on the screen readers, this will be the first uh, item to be read. And I need it 
on top. Remember every item that you don't want to be read by your screen reader need to be need to have this option enabled. Okay, objective one, copy. And coming back to that, uh, to making sure the screen readers can read it and other accessibility, all of our newest uh, Lectora course starters are accessible. They are built in that fashion. Um, yes. And uh, and we're we're doing our best to do the same thing with the other tools, but it's definitely more feasible inside of Lectora, and uh, that's that's where we're focusing our energy right now. That is true. Thank you for pointing that out, Andrew. Okay, I will just have three objectives, so I can show you our timeline actions. Okay, you just have to pick a. Transition for this, let's uh, do something basic like, like fly from left on all of the three groups. Properties, transitions, fly from left, transition, fly from left. Okay, perfect. So I want this item to show up at some specific time, and you can do that by using our new feature, our new timeline feature. So let's click on the red flag to add a new time event. Let's name this time event like objective one. One on action, and this is a new action. So a new action show what I want to show, show objective one. Okay. And this on seconds, so you have to say on two, let's say two seconds. Let me copy this. I will add a new action, but not in here. I will create a new event. Okay, here is your action. Click on the flag again to create a new action. Objective two, objective two, and I want it to show on the four second. Show objective number two. Okay, let's create the last one. Show objective number three. Six, let's say six. Okay, now you have your action. If you uncollapse this, you will see your stack actions. You can edit them, edit them from here or remove them if you don't want them. Remember, this is one of our new features. Okay, let's run this and see if this works. Okay, what's going on? What happened? Okay. What happened is I didn't have my elements hidden, initially hidden, so that's why it didn't work this time. But this will work now. Just have to wait, yeah. Four and six. So you can animate all of your elements, you can time your, uh, your animations and make it look and run really, really good on your course starters. So Alan, well, we're running out of time, but uh, this this has been really useful. We've had several people say that it's given them lots of food for thought and things to consider when they get started building their first modules. So uh, thank you very much. There is one more question uh, I'm hoping that we can answer. Um, yes. There's a person here that says that they export all of their titles to HTML and they use high compression options during the publish process and uh, their end users are experiencing slow screen loads uh, even though that when they're when they're using you know downloading stock images they're trying to get them at the smallest size um, and it's extremely frustrating to them to have to take the stock images through photoshop to try to get them through to an even smaller size uh, do you have any ideas or hints or tips or is that just the unfortunate truth that you got to get your images really really small and exporting them in photoshop or some sort of photo editor is the answer yeah, yeah. For 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 now, this is the way. One of the suggestions is to uh, have 
three different instances of images, one image for desktop, one image for one image size for landscape, the for, for tablet portrait, and one for a mobile mobile and have different sites. Yeah, for now this is the only the only option, guys. Okay, excellent. Uh there also were a couple questions. I'll address them really quickly. Um about uh, Lectora. We had one person say, so why are you showing Lectora instead of uh, the other tools? Why did you choose Lectora? It's because eLearning Brothers makes Lectora. eLearning Brothers, uh, is, they're the developers of Lectora. So uh, we're, we're all about Lectora here. However, we do still have templates for uh, Articulate Storyline, as well as Captivate and PowerPoint and Camtasia. So, uh, you know, we still make templates for all of them but we are the developers and producers of, of Lectora. So I'm going to take the screen back if that's all right, Alan. Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you very much, guys. Hope you, you learned something new today. Absolutely. And if you guys want to try out what you saw today and you're not a Lectora user, you can get them in an authoring suite. You can get Lectora and the entire asset library as well as a lot of other good things in our authoring suites. And if you're interested in our Platinum authoring suite, it also includes Scenario VR, which is a amazing uh, rapid development tool for, and it's all online for virtual reality development. And it's it's super duper cool too. You can check those out at elearningbrothers.com. If you have any questions, please send us an email at info at elearningbrothers.com and we'll reach out to you and answer any of your questions. Regardless of what tool you've got questions in, we're happy to answer those questions. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about our authoring suites or anything eLearning Brothers related, please give us a call at 801-796-2767. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We hope you had a great time, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you, Andrew. See you, everyone.